Welcome to the House of Hoosier Podcast. I'm your host, AJ Guyton, and I'm here with a very special guest. You know, our Hoosiers are taking on the Michigan State Spartans uh, tomorrow, and it's going to be a tough game. Always, uh, just universally on this podcast, the Breslin Center has been announced as one of the toughest places to play in the Big Ten, the hardest place to play and get a roll win in the Big Ten, and especially in conference play. And I'm here, I'm here with one of their – all-time great basketball players. Man, I don't, I don't need to spit out the entire resume. So I'm just going to do just a little bit, man. We talk about three-time captain. We talking about he led, he led the Spartans to 2000 National Championship. Three, They're only three-time All-American, assist king, Big Ten, top two in assists. I mean, we talking uh, two-time Big Ten player. Yeah, I was happy to get one. He got two of them. So we're talking about my man, man, lead guard. He was the reason why the Spartan uh, the Spartan goals changed. My man, Mateen Cleese. What's up, boy? AJ, what's up, my brother? Man, hey. it is. Go ahead. You know, I always get excited when I see you, you baby. You know? <laughs> um, hey, listen, I, I, I'm in I'm in the presence of, of a real one. You know, that, that, really, that really knew how to play this game. That really, really put that Ooh. ball in the hole. Like, like. Defense is really, 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 really came out to try to stop you. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So it's, it's my pleasure, man, to hang out with you for a few minutes, baby. Man, I'm in the presence of greatness, man. And and when you're around a team, you know, uh, winning oozes off of the guy. Man, you ain't got no choice but to elevate your life goals, your basketball, whatever it is you try to do. <laughs> you have no cho choice but to elevate it, man. And this guy was probably one of the main reasons I was personally – able to elevate my game because I had to try to live up to his lofty expectation of what he brought to the Big Ten from, from day one, man. And, you know, um, what I people don't know, man, we almost had an opportunity to play together, man. We, we could have, if I would have committed to Michigan State, it would have been hell on the Big Ten forever. I mean, but at the end of the day, I, I tell people, I say, I, I recognize the team as one of the greatest play, uh, point guards in the nation at that time. And at that time, we want to play against the, the greatest. We didn't want to join them at that time. We want to compete and see where we were. And that's that's the reason why I didn't commit to Michigan State at that time, because I saw Mateen as like, you know, he was top five in the country and I was I needed to play against that. So that was that that would have been ugly for the Big Ten. So y'all better be happy. Y'all that would have been four, that would have been three national championships, four Big Ten titles. If that, oh. if that would have yeah, that, that would have been ugly. That, that would have definitely been ugly, man. And let me tell you, I would have, I damn sure would have rather played with you than against you. You better believe that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Me too, man, because it's, it's hard to beat you. You want everything, man. And I, I was at MSU at, at, uh, getting, at my daughter's. She was getting recruited by Michigan State. Uh, and I was up on campus, man. But I just could not believe that I didn't see a, Mich a, a Mateen Clean statue. Where is it somewhere I can't find it? I ain't <laughs> nah, nah, I've seen magic. Did he? They got magic. They got the, the, the great, you know, yeah. Magic Johnson up there, but no my team <laughs> yet. Uh maybe we can uh call a few people. I think I know a few people, so maybe we can Absolutely. call a few people, AJ, and get it done. Man, that ain't good enough for me. I if, if magic up there, you four years of that work. I mean, magic was 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 on another level. Two years of that work, and he was out. But four years of that work, <laughs> consistently winning at the highest level. Where uh, Michigan State, y'all tripping? Where is the Mateen Cleese statue or something? I don't know. I mean, I need something on the door. I don't. I don't <laughs> care what it is. We we gotta make that happen. But man, first let me get, get jump right into it, man. I, me personally. And I, you know, Mateen is a dear friend of mine, but I haven't really had the time trying to sit down with him and really just talk about what made the man, what made the man Mateen Cleves. And my, my first question to you, Mo, is what, how, how was growing up in Flint, Michigan, how was growing up in Flint, Michigan di uh, dictate how who you became as a person and as a competitor on a basketball floor? What were those elements like in Flint, Michigan that turned you into a, a, a monster, a winner? Oh, yeah, man. AJ, I mean, it molded me. It molded mm -hmm. me. You know, growing up in Flint, Michigan, first of all, we was, uh, you know, we had a rich tradition of, of, of great athletes that came mm -hmm. out of Flint, Michigan. I mean, you can go years and years and years back, even before I was born. You know, Flint was tradition rich and uh, having great athletes. Now, and I'm sure it was the same in Peoria. Growing up at the 
in Flint, like playing at the park, mm -hmm. that was a dog fight. You know, that yeah. was a dog fight. I don't care what neighborhood you was in. If you mm -hmm. was at a park in Flint, Michigan, back when I was growing up, it was a dog fight. And if you lost the game, you had to sit an hour. So right. you know, uh, losing, mm -hmm. losing wasn't an option. You yeah. know, to be honest, like the fights that you got into, it was like, that's because somebody took a bad shot and your team lost the game. Yeah, right. and you had to wait an hour to get back over the court. So yeah. I think, you know, being at the, you know, being at the gyms and the, the playgrounds back then, man, it, you, you had to prove yourself every day. I don't Absolutely. care what you did the day before. It was somebody else that was on that court the next day. And you had to prove to him that, you know, you was one of the best players out there. So I definitely know um, that, you know, growing up in Flint and playing at the parks and, uh, being in the open gyms back then, that 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 molded me uh, to 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 be the the tough competitor that people saw at Michigan State. Hey, I'm gonna take a little old from my one of my favorite hip hop movies, Brown Sugar. What when did Mateen Cleese fall in love with the game of basketball? Uh, that's a good question, man. I, I just think it was day one. You know, I have brothers oh, that play sports that were athletes. My father was an athlete, uh, which I didn't see him play, but. My brothers, I just I just grew up in it, you know, mm -hmm. and, in, and in my neighborhood, that's what it was. You go outside. I mean, you got, like I said, cats at the park in the backyard yeah. playing or or you out in the front yard trying to just get by your friend. If I can beat you, get by you and beat you to the next driveway, you know, mm -hmm. right. that was a thing. So um, that I fell in love with it from day one. I think my father and my brothers and them, they just put the ball in my hand from day one. Absolutely, man. You are a five-star recruit coming out of Flint, Michigan. My daughter's going through it now, kind of being a top recruit in a small town. What was it like as a five? I don't, I don't think people understand. That means you're one of the top 15 players in the country. And being the big city, Chicago, L.A., they used to that. But what, did, what was the Flint, Michigan uh, community like, uh, understanding that you were a five-star recruit? Well, first of all, shout out to your daughter, my niece. She, she got game, straight yes, game. So uh, let me let me put that out there. But um, being a, a five star, I mean, it, it that was that meant meant a lot to me, especially mm -hmm. being from a small city. Because I Flint, mean. we always like you say, Pierre, y'all going up against Chicago. Flint, we're yeah. going up against Detroit, yeah. and they got all of the attention. You know, yeah, the, the state, the the the, the 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 state news and. Um, you know, everybody wants to write about, you know, the, the players out of Detroit and deservedly so, you know, they have right. some cats that can really play, but mm -hmm. I took pride in, you know, showing, um, the state every time I went out to play a game and showing them that we got some real deal players coming out of Flint as well. So, mm -hmm. um, that, that meant a lot to me to be, to be ranked and recognized, uh, amongst the great players. Uh, around the country. And, I, and to be honest, I didn't get caught too much up in the rankings. That didn't, sure. that didn't make me, but. Yeah. Definitely felt good to see your name, you know, with, uh, amongst the great ones like Kobe Bryant's and the Rip Hamilton's and the, you know, uh, Mike Bibby's and you know, all the great players. And that 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 was kind of cool to be a part of that. Stephen Jackson, you know, Jermaine O'Neal. I can go on and on, but oh, it was just an honor to be a part of that group. That that group. This man was top. 10, top 15 with with names like Ronnie Fields, with names like Ooh. Kobe Bryant. J uh, uh, Jason Collier was up there. Uh, Lester Earl was up there. Mike Bibby, Shaheen Holloway. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, our 96 class was one of the top. I was down there like number 46, but I was looking <laughs> up. I was looking up at y'all though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I but I that's I, but before, before you even go on, that's why. I don't get caught up in rankings for sure because <laughs> you was a cold, you was cold blooded. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it showed when you got to IU. Right. You know they just sure. they missed on that one for sure. <laughs> that's <laughs> why I don't like. It was cool to be ranked high or whatever, but that's yeah. why I don't get caught up. Don't put too much into it because hell, you was one of the top high school players in the country as well. Easy. Hey, easy, easy. Shout out, shout out to the Flintstones, man. And I had a chance to compete against yourself, Charlie Bell, Mo Pete, Antonio, Antonio Smith is Flintstone, right? Antonio yes, sir. Smith. Who am I missing? That's it. That's it, right? And we all, we have a nice little uh, tradition here in Peoria as well, but never came together and create something, something special as the Flintstones with the name played off the cartoon. It was pretty dope. What? But I want to ask you, because when you came into Michigan State, it wasn't the state that it 
do this today. You took a chance. I mean, I know you were looking at Michigan. You was looking at, you know, it was still kind of hot off the fad fire. They was still, it was, yeah, I know you, and I know you, I know you want to wear the uh, Black Force Barclays and the baggy pants and the black socks. I know you was thinking about it. But ultimately, you chose, I think the time y'all was Reebok, and you chose Michigan State out of all of them. And when you got there, Tell, tell tell us, because I got a lot of young coaches around, young high school coaches that want to be coaches and don't know how to change a culture. Tell me, what were the keys for you in your mind in changing the culture at Michigan State? Yeah, that's that's a great question, AJ. And to be honest, I I, I went to Michigan State, first of all, to take the challenge. Yeah. I could have easily went to Michigan, who had already had a great program, great players, great team. Uh, Syracuse, Cincinnati, and I'm sure, I mean, you had your choice, go to yeah. some great schools as well, but I, I took pride in taking the challenge and going yeah. to Michigan State and building my own program, not just joining somebody else's. And um, my my whole focus going to Michigan State was to change the mentality. Because yeah. I felt when I got there, there were guys that was at Michigan State that was okay with losing. And yeah. that was my first big project was change the mindset when I got to Michigan State. And one thing I just simply did, AJ, we started keeping um, track of wins and losses in open gym. Wow. Like, like winning got to mean something. Like, yeah. you're not going to just lose five games and just walk away like it's okay. No, we putting that on the board. <laughs> right. So if you didn't win, if I won six games and somebody else won one, like, you, it's nothing you can say to me. Like, yeah, exactly. I, we killed y'all yesterday. So mm -hmm. I think that was one of my first big projects was changing the mentality, AJ. And we simply started doing it by little things like keeping track of wins and losses in open gym, um, competing in everything that we did, whether it was free throw contest, whether it was sprint, whether it was running a mile, you know, mm -hmm. making everything a competition. And wow. doing that, it just started building up, building up, building up. And then, hey, man, you had a group of guys that went and meant something too. And then yep. once we turned on that faucet, it was hard to turn it off. Absolutely. And I, you know, one thing I noticed that between your freshman and sophomore year, that was the biggest jump that I remember. I remember playing against you as a freshman. We both were behind the ears. I think we played in the opening day of the Big Ten game. I think y'all came to Indiana, and that was your, your first game in Big Ten players at Indiana against Bob Knight. That's that's crazy. I don't think any freshman can understand how challenging that is. But I saw a huge jump from your freshman to sophomore year. It's just you, your, your, your mindset, your confidence with the ball in your hand, your body. What did you do in the summer going into your sophomore year that changed you personally? Yeah, man, I was a shell of myself my freshman year. Honestly, I probably shouldn't have played that year. I set out the whole summer, I mean, with a broken <laughs> back, you know. I right. So I was definitely a shell of myself, but one thing I, I, I focused on was my diet, getting myself in great shape. Right. That was my focus coming back in. And and it, and it was a light that kind of clicked on because I, I averaged 10 points and five assists as a freshman. And like I said, I was a shell of myself. So yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. When my back get all the way healthy and I get in some shape, these cats in trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> I couldn't wait. Um, yeah. But I just made it a focus, man, just to live in that gym. You know, I didn't care about anything. I didn't go home for the summer. I stayed up at Michigan State. And just lived in the gym, worked on my diet, worked right. on, you know, shooting, ball handling, and just just, just lived in that gym, man. And I uh, was super excited for that sophomore season. And I just mm -hmm. let, you know, that preparation builds confidence. So when you're working hard and you're grinding, I just couldn't wait for that year to start. And when it came, man, I just – my that was my way. Like, I'm going to show the world, you know, that that that, that All-American point guard Michigan State recruited. This is him. <laughs> this, is him. The, this is that dude. He, he, he's, here he is. He, you know, welcome to the world, people. Absolutely, man. Once again, y'all, I'm here with Michigan State legend, my main man, Mateen Cleese. We talking all things Indiana and Michigan State basketball. And I want to talk to you about your preparation. See if you, take your mind back. I know you're playing a lot of big games. It might be a little fuzzy to you, but do you remember preparing for Bob Knight-led teams at Indiana? What was a pre What was a preparation like for an Indiana team? Because people, kids probably don't know, we ran motion. We didn't really run plays. We just ran most I call it controlled chaos. I was just running around, you know, <laughs> looking for cracks, looking for ways to score. How do you prepare for? And I know it's a bit. I know it was huge for a coach like Izzo because coaches that back then they looked up to Bob Knight and he was like the pinnacle. So him, he was a young coach. I, I look back at those films and how young everybody looked. <laughs> 
But I just imagine what was a week like or a few days like preparing for Indiana basketball and a Bob Knight led team at that time. Uh, it was always a challenge. First of all, yeah. you knew it was going to be a dog fight. Right. You knew that. Uh, we knew you guys were going to be prepared. Uh, <laughs> played the right way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, guarding somebody like you. The, the, I mean, it was just like you can't relax. You right, cannot yeah. relax on defense. You got to chase him. He's he's constant motion. So you got to, you know, get ready to chase him through screens, over screens. You know, whatever you got to do is just try to make you hard on him. You know, he's yeah. going to score that basketball. We knew you, you were going to score, but – the focus was just trying to make it hard on you. And and I don't even know, like, I remember back then it was like, Coach Izzo would say, it might be two guys on the floor for Indiana, and their job is just to set screens to get AJ right. Guy. Right. Though. You know, we, <laughs> we ain't worried about guarding them. So you just got to fight through the screens, and then we just got to try to make it tough as we possibly can and make mm -hmm. AJ earn, you know, every shot he gets. But, you know, it was always, you know, a challenge playing against uh, Indiana. Mm -hmm. We knew it was going to be a dog fight. You were well coached. You knew how you play hard, you competed. Uh, but the key to try to have any chance uh, of beating Indiana, especially when we were there, was to try to slow you down. Absolutely. You watch me and you hear from all American Mateen Cleese, man. Let's talk a little Michigan State, Indiana. Coming up tomorrow, I think it's eight Eastern, eight, eight Central, eight Eastern, one or two. Y'all know what it is. Michigan State coming in at 16 and 10, eight and seven in the conference. They just looks like you just lost a rivalry game in Michigan by 12. It happens. Uh, you know, they had some up and downs this season, kind of middle of the pack in the Big Ten, haven't really found their footing in the the season this year. Year. From your perspective, are they playing the Spartan way and and the, the, a way that you help create? You kind of every time every team I've seen, and that's the Draymond, that's all the way back to any uh, Jason Richardson, whoever they play just like you guys, physical on the boards, got a playbook this big. You don't know what the hell's coming, man. <laughs> are they playing? Are, what? What do you see in this team, and what 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 do you think they need to do to to get over that hump, that middle of the pack hump? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a lack of consistency uh -huh, I mean, because yeah. they show in flashes, yeah. they show in flashes that they can play, and um, and, and they got some playmakers and some guards, but I think that it's just a lack of consistency, and I think that's what kind of separated us from a lot of different teams. You knew what you was going to get, like. We were yeah. going to defend you. We were going to push the ball in transition. We were going to rebound. And with them, I think that's been just the challenge of being consistent for our defending and rebounding. Like, we had games where we didn't shoot the ball well. But, mm -hmm. hey, we we could we can play in some of them dirty games. We, gonna, we don't mind getting physical and have to, you know, get out and guard some people. So the, the, some of those games that we didn't play so well on the offensive end, we were able to squeak by because we would defend you and we would re rebound the basketball. So I just think yeah. – that was our calling card. And um, if they want to have success, that's what they're going to have to get back to. They're going to have mm -hmm. to get back to, you know, pushing the ball in tempo, you know, because sometimes they do struggle in the half court. So, hey, mm -hmm. why not let the defense get set up, push the ball, try to get some early opportunities, um, and pretty much defend and rebound that basketball. And, and they should be able to give themselves, give themselves a chance to win playing that way. You guys have always said dynamic – guard play and, and that goes to the front court it was always you know yourself and uh charlie bell and mo pete i see a little bit of that in uh, uh tyson walker and aj hogar have you ever had have you had a chance to kind of talk to a guy like aj hogar i know tyson walker is a different player than you was but aj hogar is more similar in the fact that big body pushes he can really pass it uh in competitive and things of that nature have you ever had a chance to kind of mentor those guys and teach them teach them your ways and, and to help them uh go in their career yeah 100 percent. i talk to him all the time and and one thing i always tell tyson walker shoot the basketball man score the ball you're not you're not me you know what i mean we got totally different styles you know yeah. Score right. that basketball put that ball in the hole you know look to be more aggressive mm -hmm. um that that's what i try to tell him and then aj hogar lead the team you got to be yeah. more vocal you got to talk you got to bring more people to the park and, you know, point guards and quarterbacks are judged on wins and losses. You know, yeah. and I told you, man, if you ever want to have a chance to, to play after uh, Michigan State, your team's got to win. You right, know, because yeah. like you said, he got a great feel for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he got all that little crafty moves and really good at getting in the lane and finishing around the basket. But what I always challenge him is just bring other people to the party. 
You know, if you want to win or have a chance to win, not only do you have to play well, but you have to have that ability as a point guard to uplift uh, the play of other people around you. Absolutely, man. I, and I say that unequivocally on this podcast as we're getting to that age where we always forced to kind of look backwards. And I said, I, I always played to win. I competed at a high level. I said, But the thing that I was missing as a four year player at Indiana is I knew I should I knew I should slap that player for not playing hard, but I didn't slap. Him. I knew I should. You know, I knew what was supposed to be happening. But I didn't act on it. And that's that's what I think these young guards coming into college that have that opportunity to lead teams need to understand. You have to, I needed to be more vocal. I needed to say, hey, Dane, or hey, hey, you need to you need to get your ass in order or whatever it was. I felt it, but I always felt it wasn't my place. And then when I look at it, I meet a guy like who's been to the mountaintop like you. I realized, damn, I should have acted on that emotion. I should have. It would have changed our season around. It would have been, like you said, we're judged on wins and losses and, and opportunities slipped by to where I should have said something, man. And I, I hope AJ and Tyson, Tyson seems to be a little quiet on the court as well. I hope they really get that and start getting into their – your opponent's asses and letting them know, hey, man, this is Spartan way, and this is the way it needs to be done. Go ahead. Yeah, and think about this, AJ. When you work as hard as you work, you earn yeah. the right to hold Absolutely. other people accountable. Now, yeah. if you're lazy, then <laughs> shut up. You can't say that to nobody. But Fact. when you work yeah. as hard as you work, man, you got all the right in the world to hold people accountable. So that's why all the work I was putting in, man, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't mind telling somebody, hey, hey, <laughs> get your shit together. Let's go. Pick it up. Let's go. Let's go. I had no problem with doing that because my whole focus was winning and they yep. knew I was a selfless player. I wanted to win and they knew where it was coming from. It was coming from just, I want to win, not selfishly. Now yep. I really want to win these games. So, but when you work hard as you work, AJ, you definitely earn the right to hold people to come. Absolutely, man. That was a great message. I hope you young people listening, man, you have to, in order to hold people accountable, you have to be the hardest worker on the team. Bottom line. And if you are, then feel go have at it. But I feel like you have to create that tension on winning teams. Now that I'm older and I see you have to create that tension to where you hold people accountable. They're doing their jobs. And also in return, when you're bullshitting, they hold you accountable. So, you know, because yep. you... We have lows in the season too, where we come out there and don't play up to our All-American status. But we, you know, the, the great teams like the Spartans back in 2000, they held, I can hear it on the court. I can hear when I when I score on Mo P, my team, like, hey, hey, come on, man. Send them this way. I got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep stick to the plan. You know what I mean? So, but kick continuing on, man. When you look at that Michigan State roster, is there any particular position? Uh, that you think or players that you think can elevate their play. You know, sometimes it's always an unsung hero, man. Like somebody sitting there don't know it's their turn. Dude, it's your turn. Wait, is there any player like that for Michigan State that you can see that might be able to take you guys to another level going forward? I, I really do, man. And I, I think as far as guard play, as far as potential, mm -hmm. I think Jay Aiken's got more potential than both of those guards. With all respect, dude, because I, I like Walker. I like A.J. Hogarth. I think both of them are fantastic players. But Akins, to me, he, he has it. And um, he's been battling injuries uh, throughout the season. He had a really good summer. He was at Chris Paul's camp, played great there. Uh, ended up, I think, in the stress fracture. He's been in and out um, and just haven't had no stability on the floor. Yeah. But I really think he has the tools to really take Michigan State to another level, add, a, add that, that consistent third double-figure score. I think that's something he definitely can bring to the table. He can create his own shot. He's uh, much more athletic than what people give him uh, for, and he can go, man. So I, I'm a big fan of him. I think he can help uh, Michigan State. If they can kind of get things together and squeeze in this tournament, if they're going to have a deep run in the tournament, he's yeah. going to be the factor. Absolutely, man. Let's let's talk legendary coaches for a minute. You played for a legendary coach. You helped him get his start. I'm a little different. I came at the tail end of kind of my legendary coach's career, not knowing that that was the tail end. Um, I, I This is my theory. Sometimes I think coaches stay too long. I think, you know, I think they, I think uh, sometimes the, the it passes them by. And I think it happened to Coach Knight at that time. Do, do you think, do you see Izzo 
adjusting to the, you know, all this NIL stuff. The college game has become me, me, me. Give me some money. Give me this. Give me that. You just said earlier, you came because you, you have the challenge of changing a culture around. They ain't nobody coming in Michigan State for that reason no more. Like so, at the end of the day, these coaches have to adjust with the times. You're closer to Izzo than anybody else. Is he doing a good job adjusting to the times? Yeah, I, I, I think he is, and, and I, I still think that you know there is room for coaches that hold kids accountable. And, right. and I think you do have some coaches out here that's still doing that. Um, mm. And and I think he he's he's not as like people like think he's bad now. I'm like. That's nothing to right. how he was riding us and some of the stuff he say to us. And he was just, Damn. you know, trying to motivate us and challenging us and, and holding us highly accountable. Exactly. But I, I, I do I do worry about it. I do worry yeah. about him um, in this new uh, uh, era because I know it. he's not he's not for that, like the NIL and these kids coming on campus and you talking <laughs> to them and they're not even talking about tradition or the uh -oh. plays you run or how they fit in the offense thing is about how much money I can get. I can make and right. I, I, I don't know if that's something he's he he's big on, but he, he's doing a solid job, I think, you know, doing to doing what he has to do to try to keep bringing in some of those top players. Man, Tom Izzo, even though I didn't play for him, he's my all he's my all other than the coach now, he's my all-time favorite Big Ten coach. I mean, I had an opportunity on the coaching trail to talk to him, sit down, rap with him. You know, I missed that as a player. I didn't have that personal connection with him like you guys do. Be able to pick up the phone and say, Hey, is I need a new shirt, man. Send me, I need a box. Hook me up, you know what I mean? So I think that's awesome. But I also don't – I look at Bayheim. I look at Coach K. I look at Dean Smith. I look at Lou Olson. I think some Bob Knight, sometimes Gene Katie, sometimes they stay too long. And I want him to ride out on that sunset and be done with this mess. You know what I mean? And let <laughs> it's, time, it's time to let somebody else, you know, not for him. I want him to win first and then let somebody else ride into the sunset. But that was a great response, man. And um, let's, let's talk a little bit of Indiana basketball, man. Trace Jackson, Indiana's always had a player that just gets money. Trace Jackson Davis is that guy here today. I know you ain't a coach, but I need you to throw your coaching hat on for about two minutes. And as Indiana's coming in, riding a wave, having only one eight out of ten, they they climbing the chart number three in the Big Ten in the standings, only a couple games out of first. And uh, Michigan State, I think it's a must win for them. I think they for just for team morale, every game's a must win. Every your next game is always a must win. But for their for their confidence and being able to not. About these next two road games that they have coming in, they're going to have to slow down TJD. A, a coach Cleves, I know you're coaching your son a little bit. What would you, how would you slow down Trace Jackson Davis and, and try to get out of the Breslin Center with a win tomorrow? Well, I would throw different bodies at him. You know, mm -hmm. I would throw different bodies at him, try to wear him down, you know, get physical with him. And then I'll uh -huh. switch it up sometimes. Sometimes I'll, I'll double right away. You yeah. know, then sometimes. We'll double on the, you know, when, once he catch it, you know, then or someday, you know, we'd we we double, um, you know, as soon as he puts the ball down, you know, yeah. just switch it up and then come from different areas, you know, to try not to try not to let him get comfortable, kind of get, you know, kind of rattle rattle him a little bit. So what would with, with a player like that, because he played hard, man, he's very yeah. athletic around Great the basket. Player. You know, try to get him far as you can away from that basket as well. When he uh -huh. get deep post position, he's pretty much unstoppable. So work him off that, work him off that block, and then send different bodies at him. You know, come double him at different times on the catch. You know, one dribble, uh, deny all. You know, just be physical with him and just try to wear him down. Absolutely. Somebody asked me what would I do. I said, man, we had about three or four Trey Jackson Davises on each team when I played. So <laughs> I'm a little, <laughs> hey, we just had to deal with it, man. It was three or right. four seven footers on each team. Um, so uh and 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 looking at their at resume, um, do you think it's a must win for the Spartans tomorrow? One hundred percent. Yeah, they, no. it, it's a must win. It was some games that kind of got away from them, no. but um it is a must win and, and they need to finish the, you know, finish the the Big Ten out, you know, and 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 and, and win those games, and uh, just try to get in the tournament. You know that that's the thing. You know, Izzo is a mad scientist when they get to March. Absolutely. So yeah, if I'm Michigan there. State, I'm yeah. just saying, just get there. It ain't got to be pretty, <laughs> right? But just get in the tournament, and then once we get there, you know, anything can happen. Ain't always the best team win in the tournament. You just got to be the best team that day. And I mm -hmm. like Izzo chances, you mm -hmm. know, in that type of environment. 
Absolutely. You know better than anybody. Hey, and, and wrapping up my, my conversation, I know I can talk to this dude for two, three hours, but I got three more things I'm going to ask. First, you were the last team to win a championship out of the Big Ten. I know I know. part of you like, you like, yeah, you know, that, that's, hey, y'all keep taking them L's. But, but the other part of you, you are representative of the Big Ten. You want to see the Big Ten be successful, man. Let me ask you, why do you think it's been a, str a struggle for Big Ten teams. We had some go to the Final Four. Michigan's been, Wisconsin has been, lost to some great teams. But why hasn't the Big Ten? What well, your theory on why the Big Ten hasn't been able to give get over that hump since you put? And I'm gonna say this: the reason why I thought you guys won it because you guys, first of all, you had a tough road. I mean, the Big Ten wasn't easy. You know, you you guys had to play every single night. You were prepared, but. I felt like you guys could play any style of basketball. Y'all want to run? Let's run. Y'all want to slow this thing down? Let's slow this thing down. And I think that was unique for the Big Ten that we haven't seen in a long time. You, Big, Big Ten likes to bump and grind. But you took that journey. You won those six games. Why do you Why do you think uh, it's been a struggle for the Big Ten to, to, to win a national championship? Yeah, I, I just think you said it. Um, I, we, had, we, were, we, we were really good at being able to adapt to any style. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, they thought we wanted to, you know, play slow basketball. We didn't. You know, we played in the Big Ten where people slowed us up. You yeah, know what right. I mean? Slow down, grind game. But we really wanted to get out and run. So I think that has something to do with it. Then you got to look at some of the teams, man, that, you know, that, that some of the um, Big Ten teams lost to. I mean, yeah. uh, Carolina had some some dog teams. You know, I think when Michigan State lost to them in the Final Four a couple of times, and yeah. I think Illinois lost to um, – North lost Carolina. To the Illinois team yeah. I love with D. Brown and Darren Williams. I love it. They had, they yeah. had a squad. I, I think sometimes it's just bad timing, you know, running up against some of them some of them dog teams. But I just think being able to adapt to, to, to many different styles, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that you got to have in your bag if you want to win it all. Absolutely, man. And finally, baby, hey, today, go ahead, go ahead. Finish, finish. I don't like it. I'm pissed off about it. Like, oh, come right. on, man. Like, <laughs> let's get some more championships, man. It's cool, you know, but I that's something I don't like. Like, come on, man. Let's get we too good of a conference to go this yeah. long without winning the national championship. You know, you know what I think is one of the other detriments to our conference? And you know, the Big Ten tournament came in when we were sophomores. And I think because of our physical style, I think those extra three to four games. And with only two or three days to, to to get ready for the NCAA tournament, it only has a major effect on our conference because of our physical style. I think we have to – I think our coaching is so good that we prepare so well against one another in conference. It makes it seem like conference uh, – practice games. It's like, I, like Coach Knight had your playbook. All he knew exactly what was gonna happen. He I had to do this. I and it's like, man, and so our games were just all right, man. We're gonna impose they will. So I think at the end of our season, if you watch our games, I think Indiana just beat somebody 68 to 62 the other day. I'm and I'm thinking to myself, I said, that ain't enough points to score in the NCAA tournament. There's <laughs> too much energy out there in the NCAA tournament. Now, now the yeah. national championship game for you guys is always a grind because you got the nerves got to get out first, you know what I mean. But that, but that's just my idea. We can talk about that on your show yeah. next time. You know what I'm saying? But uh, today, man, you public speaking, man. And uh, I love watching motivation with my team. If you haven't seen, get on, get on Instagram. He's on, he's on TikTok. Everything every morning. He got a great message for you coming straight from him, man. And how did you get into, you know, doing some motivational speaking? And 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 and, and how did that all start and come about? Man, you know what? Just you know, working at UWM, my my role. At, and we're the number one overall lender in America, so I'm super excited about that. Yes, but sir. my role at the company is a leadership coach, and it's pretty oh. much just to coach and train and 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 and, and mold our leaders uh, into great leaders and show them how to get the best out of others. And um, I've always had um, a, a, a liking to help others. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, that's something that I just I just thrive on is trying to help other people. When I played point guard, that was my motivation is to get other people going and um, do whatever I could do to help people get better. So um, that's what it was. And I, I was, you know, kind of speaking to some of our clients at work and they started saying, hey, man, how do I get more of you? I, I need more of you, you know, and right. you should start posting. It was just suggestions. They told me I should start posting stuff on social media. And that's right. how it came about, man. And it, 
And the majority of the time, it's just what I'm doing. I turn my phone around. I'm sitting in my truck or wherever I am. And if it's something on my chest that I feel, I just get it off. You know what I mean? I just try to get it out to the world. There's no need to hold on to this stuff. Right, and sure. sometimes you might listen to it. Some people might say, it ain't for me. It's going. Somebody's going to get something out of it. And that's why I put it out there. If, if it's one person that look at it and it motivates them or enc encourages them to go out and be great, then I'm, I'm I'm doing my job. So I just really it ain't nothing in it for me. I just I just like to motivate people and see other people uh, have success. Absolutely, man. That's motivation with Mateen. Uh, you can catch Mateen underscore Cleves on Instagram. Make sure y'all go check those out every morning. You get one every morning, so make sure you check that out. Last meal, talk about your son. Just a little son, a little bit. Got a son on the come up. My my main question is, is there anybody else that's going to be able to get to him other than Michigan State? Are you going to allow... <laughs> Are you going to allow an open recruiting process or is this a lockdown? But tell a little bit, everybody, a little bit about your son, his development and and, and how you go about as a father and a coach, you know, being, uh, you know, shaping his development. Yeah. AJ, and, I, and, and for me, it was, it was, it was a challenge because um, I named him after me, you know, and then I had to learn <laughs> the balance of being the dad and the coach and when, the, when the kind of, hold him accountable, when to kind of pull back. I remember calling you and kind of yeah. asking you what you were doing and, um, you know, having conversations with, like, uh, Rick Brunson, who raised Jalen Brunson and a few Absolutely. other guys that raised NBA sons. And um, it was just about finding that balance, you know, when to push him or just when to kind of call the dogs off or whatever. <laughs> but he, he got a chance if he keep working. I don't ever talk about him publicly because I just like to keep him low and keep cool. him humble. But he do – He's been working hard, and he got a chance. If he continue to work and stay committed, uh, mm -hmm. maybe to, to put himself in position to get recruited one day. Um, he's 13 years old, lives in a gym, um, you know, got a good, good feel for the game because I've been, you know, put the ball in his hand from day one. But to your question, yeah, recruitment is wide open. If, he's, if he puts himself in position <laughs> to get recruited, he gonna we're going to honor everybody. You know, Michigan sure, State was great for me. Yeah, I'm biased. Sure. I would love to see him in the green and white. But it was great for me. You know, it could yeah. be another opportunity coming that's, that fits him better. So Absolutely. I don't want to be that father. You know, I, I want him to sit back. And if he is, once again, if he is good enough to get recruited, um, to enjoy it. You know, right. go on different visits and, and, and the things we were able to enjoy, Absolutely. man. So I don't want to – I want to kind of sit back if, if he do get put himself in that situation and just enjoy it as a dad and let him uh, enjoy it and have fun with it. Yeah, there are a lot of coaches right now who've been following a little bit. He's still too young to be recruited right now, but they're breathing a sigh of relief right now. They're going to say, okay, I can go after him. But <laughs> you have spoken. And finally, man, I'm going IU, 68, MSU, 64. And we always competing, so I want to see who get the closest to this score. Uh, I believe the others will step up and help TJD bring out a nice roll win in the Breslin Center, which I wasn't able to get. That was, that was just tough for me. But uh, what do you – let me get a prediction of a score for tomorrow uh, from you. Uh, you know I'm going with my Spartan dog. Absolutely. Man. You should. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to go 57 to 60. Hey, I think it's hey, going to be a dog fight. 57 to 60 <laughs> in the Breslin Center. Hauser been shooting the ball well. I see him getting another 20 piece. Uh, and, and Michigan State slide away by three, 60, 60 uh, 57. Michigan State, and when is the statue coming? I got to be up there. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm coming up to it when they unveil, unveil that thing. It got to happen, man. So, but thank you for joining the show, man. I'll get to get to your boys and get in the gym. And, and, and good luck to those Spartans, unless they play in the end, which that is tomorrow, man. Appreciate you joining the show, All American Mateen Cleaves. Appreciate you too, brother. You know I love you, man. You my brother, man. And, uh, I think we brought the best out of each other, man. And that that, sure. that friendship has lasted us this long. So love you too, and appreciate everything that you're doing, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, Mateen. Please out.